Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I hope you're all doing very well. So the Academy announced the nominees for the 2021 Emmys today and oh my goodness. <laughs> Those of you who have watched my reaction videos for the Oscars or the Golden Globes nominations list, you will know that when I sit here and discuss those lists of nominees, I usually do it with a frown. I usually do it with a look of of confusion or even disgust and dismay but today I'm happy to report that it's just all smiles <laughs> it's all smiles why because I won because I absolutely won the Emmys got it right and I won I can't wait to discuss the Emmys nominations list for this year in this video I have so many thoughts feelings <laughs> that I need to go through okay but before we delve into all of that as as per usual if you haven't already please be sure to subscribe to my channel and make sure you turn on your notifications so that you can be told when I upload next this is a big big week for content okay over here on this channel so you want to be subscribed to make sure that you don't miss a thing but without further ado let's dive into my thoughts for the Emmys 2021 nominees so first of all before we delve into each of the categories I did just want to discuss some of the big major winners in this nominees list and first one up we need to talk about Disney we need to talk about <laughs> we need to talk about how Disney likely spent millions upon millions of dollars to make sure that their shows showed up on this list they made sure that Disney marketing was working overtime make no mistake to make sure that the their shows and their talent showed up on this list and it absolutely worked because they managed to get a ton of nominations for their shows on Disney Plus. Of course you have the prevalence of the Mandalorian popping up in several different categories but then of course we need to discuss WandaVision. We need to discuss the first MCU slash Disney Plus series to drop earlier this year. A series that created a huge movement. Okay it was a literal cultural phenomenon, a cultural reset if you will and yes it is being recognized by the Academy Academy, despite the fact that the Academy traditionally does not like to recognize genre filmmaking or genre television okay and by genre we mean anything that's not just a classic drama and strictly a comedy all of these other genres these subgenres like horror like comic book inspired content they tend to be left out of the equation when it comes to awards season so to see one division eat up those nominations <laughs> is incredible it's a sight to behold and if there's anyone that could have done it of course it would be Disney because like I said they have deep pockets and considering this nominations list and how many nominations WandaVision ended up getting I have to say it was money well spent and speaking of genre filmmaking speaking of these sub genres that aren't traditionally recognized during awards season I was absolutely delighted absolutely delighted to see Lovecraft Country featured in so many of these categories yes thank you HBO this is another one HBO is another studio that really just rinsed out all of their money <laughs> rinsed out all their pockets because they have a ton of incredible content okay HBO has been known to be beloved by the Academy uh, the Television Academy because of their excellent content throughout the decades but I'm just so happy that they showed so much love and dedication and marketing power towards shows like Lovecraft Country which again traditionally would have been ignored by the Academy because it's in the horror genre but it was actually recognized in not just one or two categories but in a few categories across the board I was just so delighted it is so worthy of that it is so deserving of that recognition and yes I am absolutely heartbroken to hear the news that they did cancel the show like <laughs> Just when I was upset about the fact that they cancelled the show, HBO, what are you doing? Just as I was upset about that, they managed to at least give me this 
consolation prize of we spent a ton of money on the marketing towards the Emmy campaign so hopefully or take home some awards or at least get that recognition for being nominated and it's a sour pill to swallow but I'll take it <laughs> and another series that I was super excited to see HBO back and back wholeheartedly was I May Destroy You listen if you've been here for a moment you know you know what my reaction was to the Golden Globes nominations list you know how I reacted to seeing the absence of Michaela Cole's I may destroy you on that list. You know how the internet reacted. <laughs> those of us in the know, those of us who knew that it was the best show of last year, we know, okay, how we felt when the Golden Globes decided to snub that show in favor of stupidity like Emily in Paris. We'll get to that in a second, by the way, because apparently it's still, it's still a conversation to be had, but whatever. I was so pissed off i was so dismayed to see the lack of i may destroy you um in the golden globes nominations list and i'm so glad that the emmys didn't make the same mistake because let's be real the emmy saw the reaction and was like oh we can't do that again <laughs> we can't do that again we can't ignore black female british talent again and i'm glad that they actually acted upon it i'm glad that they nominated the series i don't know how it's going to stack up against especially the newcomers from this year we'll see and we'll go through the categories but yeah i am happy to see it on the list i'm not gonna clap okay because it's the bare minimum <laughs> quite frankly like i was slighted before but now we're, we're back to regular scheduled programming this is the bare minimum that it could have done in order to acknowledge the excellence that was that show all right so now let's delve into some of the individual categories i'm only going to be going through the main ones okay the juiciest ones that i can sink my teeth into so first one up we have outstanding lead actress in a drama series and here the nominees are Emma Corrin for The Crown, Olivia Coleman for The Crown, Uzo Aduba for In Treatment, Elizabeth Moss for The Handmaid's Tale, Journey Smollett for Lovecraft Country and MJ Rodriguez for Pose. This is an outstanding category. This is an incredible category. I have seen all of the shows that these women have acted in and let me tell you each and every one of them deserve to be on this list my goodness like it's literally the definition of a sophie's choice this list is i just can't believe it truly the only person the only person i would say that you know doesn't really need to be there if we're being honest okay would be olivia coleman because i personally don't feel like she did anything exponentially different to what she did in season three and i know that the academy golden globes every Everyone loves The Crown, rightfully so, because it's an excellent series, don't get me wrong, but I, I don't feel like Olivia Coleman needed to be there, like, she has the Academy Award, she's already won an Emmy for this role, I think, or maybe I'm making that up, but, <laughs> but either way, I don't think she needs to be there for season four, like, season four was about one person and one person only, make no mistake, Emma Corrin is taking this home, Emma Corrin, <laughs> Emma Corrin as Princess Diana is absolutely taking this home, I'm surprised that she was was um, nominated for best lead that's an interesting choice there Netflix but she will be taking this home I think it's a very competitive move for them to put her as a lead actress even though she was clearly supporting because <laughs> because of course like when she's featured in a list like this she's going to take it home like she was absolutely incredible as Princess Diana in that season so yeah even though I do feel like this is an incredibly competitive list I mean wow and MJ Rodriguez finally getting recognition for her role in Pose is just incredible. I'm so, so happy to see it. And of course, it's history in the making because she is the first trans woman to be nominated uh, in this category. So I'm so happy to see her be recognized for her incredible work on that show. And it's a similar thing with Jenny Smollett. I feel like Jenny Smollett was incredible in Lovecraft Country. I mean, I have a whole stack of reviews for that series if you want to hear more about my thoughts on that show but she was phenomenal in Lovecraft Country and then you also have Uzo Aduba who's incredible in In Treatment she's the best part of that show just an amazing complex nuanced performance that's also kind of dialed way down to make her so much more relatable and and feel so much more real uh, 
amazing <laughs> all of these women did an incredible job this past year so it really is a sophie's choice but if i had to put my money on anyone it would be emma because let's face it her princess diana was entirely unparalleled okay so next up we have outstanding lead actor in a drama series and here the nominees are Regé jean page for bridgerton sterling k brown for this is us billy porter for pose jonathan majors for lovecraft country matthew reese for perry mason and josh o'connor for the crown and once again we have a pretty stacked category like wow i did also just want to point out how exciting it is to see that four out of the six nominees in this category are black men so congratulations <laughs> congratulations to them okay for making history i assume i definitely feel like each and every one of these actors deserve to be on this list the only series that i haven't seen from this list is perry mason and there hasn't really been much buzz about perry mason as a series outside side of the awards circuit so I'm gonna mm, I'm gonna push that one to the side for a little bit I think in the case of Billy Porter whilst he gave an incredible performance for the final season of Pose he already won an Emmy I believe for his role in this series so that kind of discounts him a little bit and a similar thing with Sterling K Brown who has already won uh, for his role in This Is Us and rightfully so because he is literally by far the best part <laughs> of that show and that show is already incredible so that saying a lot but I kind of want Jonathan Majors to win I want Jonathan Majors to win for Lovecraft Country because I truly think what he did on that show was just so complex it was so layered like each and every episode that character went through so much and Jonathan Majors brought us on his journey like he drove us through this incredible journey and I think he really did a great job of conveying all of these emotional beats that the character was going through I mean, if you've watched the series you know <laughs> you know like it was part love story it was part story about a father-son relationship there were so many layers to his performance and I'm so glad that he got recognized for his work on that series and I would really love to see him take the award home but I'm leaning more towards Josh O'Connor for actually taking the award home even though again isn't he like a supporting actor on the crown I don't know <laughs> I don't know who's lead anymore okay it might my opinion he would be supporting but I guess the story was about Diana and Charles this season so maybe they are leads after all um but I do feel like in this case as well like Jonathan Majors would be more of a lead because it was literally about his story whatever <laughs> I do think it's likely to go to Josh O'Connor because they lo they love to do this right like they love to nominate the they love to nominate but then when it comes to taking home the award we'll see so the next category that we're gonna go through is outstanding supporting actress in a drama series and here the nominees are Gillian Anderson for The Crown, Helena Bonham Carter for The Crown, Emerald Fennell for The Crown, Anne Dowd for The Handmaid's Tale, Yvonne Strahovski for The Handmaid's Tale, Samira Wiley for The Handmaid's Tale, Madeline Brewer for The Handmaid's Tale and Anjanu Ellis for Lovecraft Country. Okay so this category is kind of ridiculous. <laughs> this category category is kind of silly ridiculous nonsensical because it seems as though they were only paying attention to the performances in the handmaid's tale <laughs> for this category and as well as of course the crown and then they just added in a lovecraft country <laughs> they just added it in there just slid right in at the end but yeah i do find it interesting how this category is basically split between the handmaid's tale and the crown um but i'm very happy to see the actress from lovecraft country make an appearance here I'm I'm so sorry I don't want to butcher her name but Mrs Ellis okay I feel like she is an incredible incredible cast member of Lovecraft Country especially that episode where we got to see her delve into her own feminine experience in episode eight I believe it was where she goes through <laughs> she traverses through time okay and she ends up in these different periods in time in the multiverse it's very like a, a sci-fi 
sci-fi special in that series that just was so enlightening and it really spoke to the black female experience especially from the perspective of you know a middle-aged black woman which is so rarely seen so I feel like she definitely delivered on those character moments and those emotional moments in that episode especially as well as throughout the series in terms of the ladies from The Handmaid's Tale no one is denying their talent okay like I, I'm not gonna sit here and say that the ladies of The Handmaid's Tale don't deserve Emmy nominations please like you're not gonna get that from me but it's just funny to see the, the list of just like The Handmaid's Tale actresses making an appearance in this nominations list if there is once again anyone that I would say could get knocked out of here easily easily it would be Helena Bonham Carter for the crown why are we doing this like what you're better than the Golden Globes and actually I have a perfect replacement for this slot in the nominations list because where is Wumi Wasako for her role in Lovecraft Country where is she <laughs> where's my good sis ruby she was incredible in lovecraft country like it's shocking to me that we don't see her featured anywhere on this list that is an issue that is a problem i happily would have replaced helena bonham carter for win me in this category but in terms of who i think will slash should win i mean again like it's Gillian Anderson. <laughs> it's Gillian Anderson's to lose, right? Like we're all on the same page here. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's hers to lose. So next up, of course, we have Outstanding Supporting Actor in a Drama Series. And here the nominees are Michael K. Williams for Lovecraft Country, Bradley Whitford for The Handmaid's Tale, Max Minghella for The Handmaid's Tale, O.T. Fagbanele for The Handmaid's Tale, John Lithgow, for Perry Mason, Tobias Menzies for The Crown, Giancarlo Esposito for The Mandalorian, and Chris Sullivan for This Is Us. Now again, an incredibly stacked category. I'm just so impressed. I'm just so impressed that the Emmys actually did their jobs. Like, it's just such a rare occasion where you see a nominations list and you're like, you know what, yeah, I agree. So I'm, I'm really happy with this category once again. I think each of these men are deserving Serving, um, of their positions on this list I'm so happy I'm so happy that Michael K Williams got the recognition he deserves for his role in Lovecraft Country I just talked about the complexity of Jonathan Majors's role in that in that series but Michael K Williams was also doing some actoring he was doing the actoring because his character was even more layered so I'm so happy to see him be featured on this list like I'm absolutely winning I'm absolutely winning I'm saying with the previous category we also see quite a few members from the Handmaid's Tale cast <laughs> as well as the Crown cast making an appearance in this category as well I think Tobias Menzies as a Prince Philip has always been incredible he's always been consistently excellent but I wouldn't say that you know this is his Emmy to lose in terms of the Handmaid's Tale men <laughs> um that they're all great like they're all fabulous they're all fine but I wouldn't say that any of them specifically are the favorites to win but what is an interesting addition to this list again that Disney money coming through we have Giancarlo Esposito from The Mandalorian yes we love to see it yes we love to see it. <laughs> listen Giancarlo Esposito playing a villain it, I mean it's not rocket science it's not revolutionary okay it's just one plus one equals two at this point right but that's not to say he didn't do a great job because he absolutely did <laughs> and I'm kind of gunning for him to win for the Mandalorian because I do have a feeling that that might be one of the few categories that they actually win in so I would love to see it I would absolutely love to see him take this one home however I will say I am still dismayed by the absence of one actor from this list especially considering how I've won in so many other ways we'll talk about it in a second but the absence of this actor from this category is still disconcerting okay where's Anthony Starr for the boys where's Anthony Starr for the boys they watch the boys I know because 
we're gonna talk about it they watched the voice why did they not bestow anthony Starr with the honor of being nominated for an emmy for his incredible performance on that series i think he should be added in here okay on this list take out one of the handmaid's tale men okay take one of them out but put anthony Starr on this list for his role as homelander because my guy is the goat on that show make no mistake he is the vip he should absolutely be on this list and again i know you watch the show because we'll talk about it <laughs> so next up as i said we have outstanding drama series and the nominees here are the boys bridgerton the crown the mandalorian lovecraft country pose the handmaid's tale and this is us now i have seen each and every one of these shows and we'll just run through my thoughts on each of them very quickly first of all Bridgerton congratulations for making it on the board okay <laughs> like congrats I wouldn't say it's one of the best series especially not out of this list but it, it was a cultural phenomenon like it was a cultural reset so congrats and of course Netflix has deep pockets so I'm sure it was pushing Bridgerton a lot okay because it's one of the few contenders that it has up this year so so congrats to Bridgerton for getting that recognition okay and congrats to Roger Jean Page uh, for his nomination as well and then of course you have The Crown which is always a reliable workhorse for Netflix <laughs> during awards season because we already know okay the Academy the Golden Globes everyone loves The Crown so we expected it to be here especially after the excellent series that we got in season four and then of course you have your staples like The Handmaid's Tale and This Is Us both series that are consistently brilliant consistently excellent and yeah they have passed you know several seasons and maybe the shine has worn off of them a little bit but that doesn't mean that they are not deserving of being on this list because they are consistently brilliant and you know you want to give someone their flowers while they're still there okay <laughs> instead of waiting until the final season when there may not be a chance for them to get those flowers pose because yes unfortunately i do feel like pose may be eclipsed when it comes to their chances of winning in this category but i am still happy to see them be nominated here that series is just so groundbreaking that series is just so incredible i wish it got more recognition i wish it got more seasons okay fx i wish it got more seasons but i'm happy to see it at least be acknowledged in a few categories as i said um with mj rodriguez being nominated as the first trans woman in that category of a uh, best lead actress and of course billy porter also being nominated for his work in the final season so so happy that that's happening for Pose but I do feel like it is going to be eclipsed by some of these other shows now let's talk about some of the big surprises in this category we need to discuss the boys we need to discuss the boys making an appearance in best drama first of all a lot of people have said drama where <laughs> like a lot of people have been like drama where I'm looking everywhere can't find the drama um listen I do agree that drama is a little bit sus so like the drama category like how is the boys in the same category as this is us that doesn't quite make sense <laughs> that doesn't quite make sense but at the same time it wouldn't really strictly belong in the comedy category either in my opinion I do feel like the boys does touch on some you know social issues and some you know there are layered issues and layered commentary in the boys that I would say may make it lean more <laughs> towards drama um I, I think it's almost smacking the middle though so either way it, it would have felt a little bit off but just to see it on the nominations list like uh, hats off to the Emmys someone watched the boys I'm so happy <laughs> I'm so happy to see that these prestigious academies are starting to kind of break through that traditional old school way of thinking where only certain films and tv shows are worthy of nominations for the most prestigious awards because of the prevalence of comic book media <laughs> it's impossible for them to ignore it now I do feel like the boys being featured on this list is a result of that on top of the fact that amazon has a ton of money to push this series forward um but 
I'm so excited to see it here because it's it's truly just incredible. <laughs> I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw it. I was like, The Boys? Is there another show called The Boys? Or is it the one that I'm thinking of? And everything that I just said can basically be applied to Lovecraft Country as well. And here you have another heavy hitter backing them in HBO. And like I said earlier, I'm just so, so happy to see this series be recognised. I mean, a black horror show. Like, who would have thought it? But the series overall carried out its premise so, so well. And even though I did have a few issues with the ending, I feel like just the idea of it and also the way that it tackled some social issues and taught me so much about Black American history, I think it's highly deserving of this uh, nomination and highly deserving of the recognition that it's getting. And I hope one day there may be a second season of the show. Perhaps it can be an anthology series. I don't know. HBO, work it out, yeah? Okay, call up Misha Green and work something out. And once again, a lot of what I just said can be applied to The Mandalorian. Just seeing this diversity in the nominees in this category is absolutely brilliant, especially as someone who has loved all of these shows this past year. But in terms of who I think should slash will win, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I think it'd be easier for me to say who I think shouldn't win. And it'll probably be Bridgerton or This Is Us or The Handmaid's Tale. Um, even though I do think that This Is Us and The Handmaid's Tale deserve recognition, okay, for their incredible work, I do feel like the shine has worn off on those shows and This Is Us has another chance at an Emmy next year, although that will be the final chance that it gets because that will be the final season of the show. Um, and in the case of The Handmaid's Tale, you know, it has more chances maybe? I don't know. <laughs> I think it's less likely that those shows are going to win. Bridgerton, because it wasn't quite up to par with the rest like let's be real and honestly and truly I feel like I'd be happy with any of these other shows winning in this category like yes in my dream of dreams maybe I would love to see Lovecraft Country win just to kind of suck it to HBO for cancelling it but I would also be so happy to see Pose win and of course to see The Mandalorian win like I would be happy either way when it comes to who I think will win the most cynical side of me thinks that it will probably be The Crown like let's be real it was fun while it lasted <laughs> the diversity and unexpectedness was fun while it lasted but I think it will go back to regular scheduled programming when it comes to the actual votes and it'll probably go to the crown all right so we finally left the drama and now we're getting into the comedy categories and the first one up is outstanding lead actor in a comedy series and here the nominees are Jason Sudeikis for Ted Lasso Anthony Anderson for Blackish Michael Douglas for The Kaminsky Method, William H. Macy for Shameless and Keenan Thompson for Keenan. Now out of all of these shows I've only seen one and I'm pretty sure that's the only show that I needed to have seen anyways because let's be real Jason Sudeikis is taking this home. Jason Sudeikis is absolutely taking this home for his role as Ted Lasso. Please, please. he was the sunshine of 2020. How many actors can say that? <laughs> How many actors can claim the title of literally the one of the few brightest spots of the year of hell that was 2020. Jason Sudeikis as Ted Lasso, this unflinchingly uncynical, okay, just compassionate ray of sunshine of a character. He absolutely deserves a nomination and he absolutely deserves the win. I'm so happy to see Apple TV Plus backing him all the way, okay, with their tons of money because despite their wealth, okay, despite their riches and success elsewhere, they haven't really been able to break out in the streaming space. At least they hadn't until Ted Lasso came along and became a breakout hit and so yeah they had better back Jason Sudeikis to the very end until he's holding that Emmy in his hand. Oh wait hang on <laughs> I forgot um I actually do watch Shameless. <laughs> I actually do watch Shameless and I did see William H. Macy's performance in the final series of Shameless. Maybe they would give him the Emmy for that just as a send-off for his role in that show because he was kind of excellent on Shameless um, but I believe that he's already won an Emmy for his role on Shameless so I think again it's going to Jason Sudeikis absolutely. Now our next category is Outstanding Lead Actress in a Comedy Series and here the nominees are Edie Bryant for Shrill, 
Jean Smart for Hacks, Alison Janey for Mum, Kaylee Quoquo for The Flight Attendant, and Tracy Ellis Ross for Blackish. Now, once again, there are a few shows on here that I have not seen. I believe the only show that I have seen is Shrill, which is an excellent series. Another one that has been cancelled, unfortunately. Hmm. But as a result, I would go for AD Bryant um, because she's great on that show. I personally want her to win, but I think it's unlikely. I feel like Jean Smart is having a moment right now. <laughs> she's having a moment, especially between Hacks and the mayor of East Town. I feel like it's likely to go to her because maybe she won't get it for limited series. So we're going to be skipping over the supporting actors in comedy series because I don't really watch a lot of these comedy series, so I can't really give you <laughs> a lot of my thoughts on these nominees. So instead, we're going to be heading straight towards outstanding comedy series. And the nominees here are Blackish, Cobra Kai, Pen15, or is it just pronounced penis? I don't know. <laughs> Emily in Paris, Hacks, Ted Lasso, The Flight Attendant, and The Kaminsky Method. Okay, so once again, like I said, there are a few on here that I've never seen before, so I can't really comment on them. However, even though I've never seen this series before, I will absolutely comment on its presence on this list. Emily in Paris, what kind of crack did Netflix give people when they were watching Emily in Paris for their screenings? What, like, what, what happened? Because I know for the Golden Globes, Netflix sent off the members of the Golden Globes to Paris for the whole Parisian experience in order to promote this series for a nomination. But when it comes to the Academy, like, did they do the same thing? The Academy isn't just like a small group of about a hundred voters like the Golden Globes is. The Academy is massive. Like, it's a bunch of people from, you know, all around the spectrum when it comes to Hollywood and the industry so like like what's happening <laughs> I'm very confused when it comes to Emily in Paris like this series Netflix seems to be very invested for some reason like it's not the right one to be backing Netflix but either way I think all of this is irrelevant because once again I do think that Apple TV Plus's only showboat Ted Lasso will be taking this one home absolutely like please <laughs> like if it doesn't I will be shocked okay and unless it goes to like the flight attendant which has been pretty under people's radars because no one is subscribed to HBO Max but the things that I have heard about the flight attendant have been largely positive so you know maybe the flight attendant could take it home or maybe the Kaminsky method I think it's like the final season of that show so maybe it'll take it home just in honor of you know all of the other seasons um but I do feel like more than likely Ted Lasso has got this one like please <laughs> okay so now we're getting into the juicy categories you thought that the drama categories were tough take a look at some of these limited series categories oh my goodness i'm sweating <laughs> but first one up we have outstanding lead actress in a limited series or movie and here the nominees are kate winslet for mayor of east town michaela cole for i may destroy you anya taylor joy for the queen's gambit elizabeth olsen for wonder vision and cynthia Arivo for Genius Aretha. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what? I listen, this is the one occasion where I'm glad that I'm not a voter because what would I do? <laughs> I would spontaneously combust. Like, okay, first of all, I have to acknowledge Michaela Cole getting the nomination that she deserves. Absolutely. Round of applause all around, okay? Because I was championing for her recognition for her role in I May Destroy You as well as the series overall. Having said that though, I wish she was nominated like last year. <laughs> I wish, I mean, last year would have been tough as well, but this year is like, ooh. <laughs> this year is like, what? First of all, Kate Winslet. Okay, I said when I reviewed Mayor of East Town, someone give Kate Winslet her Emmy now. That's what I said, okay? And, you know, I still stand by that, but like, <laughs> I'm kind of upset that she's taking it away from Michaela. I'm not gonna lie, like, this is tough for me. This is so hard for me. Kate Winslet was incredible in there of East Town. Like, what's going on? Why is this category so hard? And then you have, let's not even, Elizabeth Olsen for WandaVision. Did I not also say that she deserved an Emmy for her? 
again if i was one of the voters i'd be handing out emmys left right and center like it's a mess but this category is stacked like this category is the one and i haven't even mentioned anya taylor joy who's like won everything <laughs> everything at this point for her performance in the queen's gambit like i haven't even gotten to her yet I, wow <laughs> honestly like i'm just gonna wait and see what happens on the night like do i even know who's the front runner here Pff, i don't know man like I, I have a feeling that it might be kate winslet but then Anya Taylor-Joy won everything. Like it would be weird if she didn't win the Emmy, but it has been a while since the Queen's Gambit. That's the only disadvantage that she has, I think. Whereas Kate Winslet's performance in Mayor of Easttown is still fresh on people's minds. But then you also have the power of Disney just injecting one division into everyone's veins. <laughs> The only person that I haven't really heard much buzz around is Cynthia Erivo, but everyone else, like, I, it's just up to the night, honestly. Okay, so the next category we have is Outstanding Lead Actor in a Limited Series or Movie. And here we have Paul Bettany for One Division, Hugh Grant for The Undoing, Ewan McGregor for Holston, Lin-Manuel Miranda for Hamilton, and Leslie Odom Jr. for Hamilton as well. Now, this is another very impressive category. We have have Paul Bettany getting a nomination here for his role in One Division as the other half <laughs> of the series. And again, I'm super excited to see him get recognized for his role on that show. I do personally feel like there is somewhat of an absence when it comes to the uh, list of Disney Plus nominations that we've gotten here. Um, and that is in The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, just completely being left out of the equation entirely. Now, I recognize that a lot of people preferred WandaVision over Falcon and the Winter Soldier so I'm not complaining about that at all but I do personally feel like if there's any lead actor between Falcon and the Winter Soldier and WandaVision that should have been nominated it would be Anthony Mackie. <laughs> it would be Anthony Mackie, no. I do feel like that series was so driven by Elizabeth Olsen's performance. Like I wouldn't put them quite on the same level. Whereas Anthony Mackie, like he absolutely delivered in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So I would have liked to see him be recognized for his role on that show if there's anything that I would have changed. And another actor that is absolutely deserving of his nomination here is Ewan McGregor for his role in Holston. I, I feel like once again, he was the driving force of the show like if you're talking about comparisons here I truly do think that Ewan McGregor was to Holston what um, Elizabeth Olsen was to WandaVision so I absolutely think that he deserves to be on this list and I think Netflix did a great job in pushing him forward during this campaign in terms of the Hamilton boys also being nominated like I, I get it like you don't put Hamilton on Disney plus and not go for awards like it it's kind of compulsory if you have Hamilton on your streaming service you're gonna have to try I personally would have removed at least one Hamilton boy maybe Leslie Odom Jr and gone ahead and put Anthony Mackie in there although Leslie Odom Jr is a better singer although Lin-Manuel Miranda created Hamilton oh <laughs> and sticking to the limited series theme next up we have outstanding supporting actress in a limited series or movie and here we have Jean Smart from Mayor of East Town, Julian Nicholson for Mayor of East Town, Catherine Hahn for One Division, Philippa So for Hamilton, Renee Elise Goldsberry for Hamilton, Moses Ingram for The Queen's Gambit. Now, first of all, I just have to say how happy I am to see Moses Ingram from The Queen's Gambit get a nomination for her role in that series. One of my biggest complaints when it came to The Queen's Gambit was how it treated the character. Um, that Moses Ingram portrays. I can't even remember her name. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but yes, I did critique how the character was treated in this series as sort of this, you know, savior black best friend character who kind of pops up out of the blue in like episode six or something to save Beth from her financial troubles, which I took issue with because it was very much playing into the idea that she wasn't worthy to be depicted as her own character with her own issues and complexities. She was just there for Beth's convenience and we've often seen that with a ton of black female characters in the past so it wasn't my favorite to see but having said that that doesn't take anything away from the actress
actress performance in that series, especially in the earlier episodes, and I'm really happy to see it be recognised here. I'm also very happy for the Mayor of East Town ladies. I feel like they were both excellent. I feel like Jean Smart, again, is having a moment between this and Hacks. I do feel like it's more likely that she will win for Hacks as opposed to in this category, but we shall see. <laughs> okay, never say never. And then, of course, you have Julianne Nicholson portraying Mayor's friend, and she just has that scene in the car. I think I also said she deserves an Emmy. <laughs> I was handing out Emmys to everyone, but she has that scene in the car, and I think the last episode where she just has this full on breakdown. If you've watched Mayor of East Town, you know why, but absolutely, just seeing that scene, I was like, oh my God, just give it to her. <laughs> give her the Emmy like absolutely she deserves a nomination but let's also talk about Catherine Hahn <laughs> Let's also talk about Katherine Hahn getting a nomination for One Division. We love to see it. We love to see it. Like, is anyone complaining? No? Okay, great. <laughs> We're all on the same page. She absolutely deserves a nomination for One Division. Even though I feel like the writing for the character and how she's portrayed as a villain is kind of wonky. We can talk about that in a future video if we must. But I do feel like her portrayal of the character is faultless. Like, she wasn't at fault that the writing was a little bit you know but she absolutely delivered in this role again cultural reset <laughs> Agatha all along was a moment okay it was a bop and so she absolutely deserves to be on this list as well but in terms of who I think will win um <sighs> maybe Catherine Hahn could take it home you know maybe Catherine Hahn could take it home because honestly like I don't see a lot of hype around anyone else really Mayor of East Town ladies are both excellent but I've yet to see a lot of buzz around them I feel like Catherine Hahn has like the power of the MCU fans <laughs> as well as Disney's deep pockets as well as like genuine recognition um by these you know critics so I feel like maybe she might be a front runner in this category after all but the next Next category we're going to be dealing with is outstanding supporting actor in a limited series or movie and here the nominees are David Diggs for Hamilton, Jonathan Groff for Hamilton, Anthony Ramos for Hamilton, Thomas Brody Sangster for The Queen's Gambit, Evan Peters for Mayor of East Town, and Papa Asiju for I May Destroy You. I am so delighted. I am so delighted for Papa that he got this Emmy nomination. Yes. You, yes. <laughs> I, I'm speechless. Like, uh, you just love to see it. You just love to see people doing their jobs. You, you just love to see. <laughs> people watching good stuff and acknowledging excellence like I'm just I'm just so over the moon truly like thank you like thank you so much to all the voters everyone involved in the Emmys this year because clearly something was clicking I don't think it's an accident that each and every year they add more diverse people to the Academy to contribute towards these nominations so I'm glad that we're seeing this shift away from the traditional the traditional folk at the Academy were starting to see a little bit more diversity in these nominations lists. But I'm just so happy that Papa was nominated. Like this, this means the world to me, truly. All the I May Destroy You nominations mean the world to me because they are black British nominations. Like that is just so rare. I'm also really happy to see Evan Peters get nominated for his role in Mayor of East Town. Several times I've already mentioned how salty I was about how he was treated on One Division <laughs> and the Ralph Boner situation, please. I, I shouldn't even say that name, okay? It's forbidden in this household. But I'm happy to see him be nominated for his role in Mayor of East Town because he was a great character and he gave a great performance. And of course, you have the return of the Hamilton boys. <laughs> You have the return of the Hamilton boys. They're kind of like the Handmaid's Tale ladies at this point, okay? Whenever you have the Hamilton gang, okay, involved, you know they're going to show up together, okay? They're not just going to be there just on their lonesome. They're taking up a lot of space in this category. And as a result, I feel like they kind of cancel each other out, unfortunately. But it's great for them. They can say that they're Emmy-nominated actors, but I feel like it's less likely that any of them will win. In terms of who I would like to see win, 
I would absolutely give this to Papa. I feel like he gave an incredible performance in I May Destroy You. It would just mean the world to me if he actually ended up taking this one home. Like, he'd be doing it for the culture. Absolutely, he'd be doing it for the culture. But let's see what HBO does when it comes to actually getting the votes in. And really taking a look at this category, I feel like if there is a front runner, it might be David Diggs for Hamilton, maybe. I think he already won a Tony for this role. So, I mean, it shows that people really loved his role in Hamilton and it was great to be fair. And he also plays two very different characters, which plays into his advantage. I feel like overall, I would be happy with anyone taking this home, but I'm still, I'm still hoping for Papa. And finally, the last category that we're going to be diving into in this video is Outstanding Limited Series. And here the nominees are Mayor of East Town, I May Destroy You, One Division, The Queen's Gambit, and The Underground Railroad. Now I have seen each and every one of these series. The only one that I haven't finished is unfortunately The Underground Railroad by Barry Jenkins. And I already talked about this in my um, What I've Been Watching video from a month back, but basically that series is like tough. Like <laughs> that series is a slave show, okay? It is about slavery and the hardships of slavery as well as the formation of the Underground Railroad um, but it is a very tough subject matter and it really doesn't hold back when it comes to the visuals as well so I was really taking my time with that show and I think I barely got into episode two because I'm just not in the right frame of mind to be dealing with that amount of black suffering especially after this year like I'm I'm taking a break from black suffering okay like you'll have to excuse me so that's the only show that I had the least experience with but everything else I've watched from start to finish and I'm very happy to see be featured on this list and of course once again I can barely contain my excitement and joy at seeing I May Destroy You get the recognition it deserves get the recognition it deserves thank you HBO for delivering okay because I was really upset earlier this year with the Golden Globes okay playing fools okay taking me for a fool telling me that I May Destroy You wasn't the best series of last year even though it clearly was whatever I have a whole video talking about the best shows of 2020 if you want to check out my thoughts on that but yeah I'm so happy to see it finally get the recognition that it deserves like again I'm not clapping because this is the bare minimum however I will be clapping if the series takes the award home because yes I do think that I May Destroy You should take the award home out of all of these shows listen I know that it seems unlikely okay it probably is unlikely the show came out literally like a year ago so it has that working at its disadvantage but I, I just think it's so groundbreaking. It's like nothing we've ever seen before. Although so is WandaVision. But WandaVision didn't stick the landing. I May Destroy you absolutely stuck the landing. It is an excellent series from start to finish. And it also speaks to a more human, relatable exp Oh, I guess so does WandaVision. Okay. <laughs> I feel like if Michaela Cole isn't going to take it home for her performance, I think the show should take it home. Basically, whoever loses <laughs> Best Actress in a limited series should take home best series overall but that's it from me now that i told you guys my thoughts on the emmys nominations list for 2021 it's time for you guys to let me know what you thought of this list down in the comments below please be sure to subscribe to catch you videos coming up thank you guys so so much for watching i really really appreciate it and i will see you in the next one bye